Hi, this talk is about two round oblivious linear evaluation from learning with errors. I'm Pedro and this is joint work with Nick Udotling and Paul Mateus. Oblivious linear evaluation or OLE is a protocol between a sender and a receiver. The sender holds two values, A and B from a finite field, and the receiver holds a value X, also from the finite field. In the end, the receiver should learn A plus XB. In terms of security, we require that the receiver learns nothing about A and B, and that the sender learns nothing about X. OLE is usually seen as the arithmetic analog of the well-known oblivious transfer primitive. And it, it is well known that the minimal number of rounds to, uh, to, uh, to perform it is 2. OLE has found numerous applications uh, throughout the years. The most natural one being um, um, it allows us to securely realize uh, computation of arithmetic circuits, just as OT uh, realizes uh, secure computation of Boolean circuits. It has also been used to uh, realize efficient two-party secure computation uh, schemes in a variety of different settings. OLE has also been used to realize specific tasks such as private set intersection and machine, relate, machine learning related tasks. Many OLE protocols have been proposed over the years. Some of these proposals are presented in this table. As you can see, uh, current uh, OLE protocols either uh, require more than two rounds or a trusted setup or are based on non-post-quantum assumptions. This raises the question of whether we can build an OLE protocol which is maliciously secure, it takes two rounds and it's based on presumed post-quantum hardness assumptions. In this work, we provide an affirmative answer to this question by presenting two protocols for OLE from LWE. Recall that LWE is an assumption which is presumably uh, post-quantum. Our first construction is a, a, a construction for an OLE protocol from LWE which is secure against malicious receivers where security holds uh, uh, statistically and semi-honest senders assuming LWE. The main technical tool that we use uh, in this construction is a new extraction mechanism that allows the simulator to extract the receiver's uh, input and generalizes the PVW extraction mechanism for super polynomial modulus. Then we extend this construction into a fully malicious OLE protocol and the uh, resulting uh, uh, scheme is secure against uh, malicious receivers again, where st uh, um, uh, statistical security uh, uh, is maintained, and malicious uh, senders. This protocol uses an additional OT protocol. Let us first, first recall the learning with errors assumption. The LWB assumption states that for a random matrix A, a random vector S, and a vector E, which is sampled from an error distribution, the distributions of S a plus E and uh, is computationally indistinguishable uh, from a random vector. Let's take a look at the structure of this talk. We'll start by presenting the PVW OT uh, protocol from LWE and uh, why its uh, et extraction mechanism in the security proof of a malicious receiver only works for polynomial modules. Then we um, generalize the PVW uh, uh, scheme into an OLE protocol and devise a new extraction mechanism that works for any uh, modulus Q, even super polynomial. Then we uh, <coughs> extend uh, this result, this protocol, into a maliciously secure OLE uh, protocol and uh, at the cost of an additional OT scheme. Let's first recall how the PVW scheme works. In this scheme, the CRS is composed by a matrix A and a vector W. 
The receiver with input B starts by sampling uniformly at random a vector S and an error vector E, and it sends the value S times A plus E minus BW. The sender with input V0 and V1 will essentially encrypt uh, V0 under the public key AZ and V1 under the public key AW using the same randomness. That is, it, it will sample a vector R with the uh, low norm and compute A times R and the uh, value C0 which is uh, Z times R plus an encoding of V0 and C1 which is uh, W times R plus an encoding of V1. The receiver can now compute the value B times C1 plus C0 minus uh, S times C and round the result modulo 2. It's easy to see that the value uh, obtained by the receiver will, will be equal to B times V1 plus V0. Security against semi-honest senders follows easily from the LW assumption. So let's focus on the more interesting case of malicious uh, receivers. The problem here is that the value Z chosen by the adversary uh, can be chosen arbitrarily. However, independently of the choice of Z, it can be argued that one of these matrices, A0 or A1, does not have short vectors in its row span. Thus, we can use the smoothing lemma, that, which guarantees that essentially one of the uh, ciphertexts will be statistically close to a uniform. This means that one of the plain texts will be statistically hidden. So the problem now is uh, how the reduction knows which case holds. Let's see how the uh, uh, extraction works in PVW. The trick here is that the reduction will choose the matrix A together with the lattice structure. Now, given Z, the reduction can check if there's a, uh, an alpha in ZQ such that alpha times Z is close to the row span of A. If there exists uh, such alpha, then Z plus W times R is statistically close to uniform and the reduction can set B equal to zero. On the other hand, if there is no alpha, then z times r is uh, uh, the value which is uh, uh, statistically close to uniform and the reduction can set b equal to zero. However, there's a drawback. Uh, in the proof, q must be of, poly uh, must be of polynomial size uh, because the reduction needs to go through over all values of q. This is not good for OLE because uh, this would restrict the functionality to uh, fields of polynomial size. Instead, we want to perform OLE over any field, even with super polynomial size. Let's see how we can recast the PVW uh, OT scheme as an OLE scheme. Again, the CRS is composed by a matrix A and a vector W over a ring ZQ. Here, Q is a modulus such that Q can be written as Q1 times Q2. The OLE is going to be performed over ZQ1. The receiver will compute the vector Z as before using X as the input. The sender will encrypt again V0 and V1 under the different public keys and send this ciphertext to the, to the receiver. The receiver will compute the value x times c1 plus c0 minus s times c and reduce it modulo q1. As we've seen in the PVW uh, case, the value obtained by the receiver is a linear combination of v0 and v1. Again, security against the semi-honest sender can be trivially uh, established from the LWE assumption. For the malicious receiver case, we're going to write Z as S times A minus XW plus alpha D for a D of minimal length. Using the partial smoothing lemma, 
we can actually simulate the receiver's, uh, the sender's uh, message given only uh, the output of the functionality x times v1 plus v0. So it remains to show how the reduction can extract x from the receiver's message. To extract s from z, we're going to choose a matrix A prime together with the lattice trapdoor. But now, contrarily to PVW, we're going to set the CRS as the matrix A, which is the matrix A prime except the uh, last row, and W, which is the last row of A prime. Here, T is a square matrix is a square matrix uh, with low norm such that a prime times t is equal to zero. So how can we recover all the components of the vector z? Well, if we compute f, which is z times the trapdoor t, then since a prime times t is equal to zero, this will be equal to alpha d times t. If d is short, then the product d times t is also short because t is a low norm matrix. So we have to solve the equation alpha times d prime, where d prime is the product d times t, equal to f, where only f is known. Let's see how we can solve this equation. Let's write f as uh, uh, the vector f as uh, f1 to fm and the vector d prime as d prime 1 to d prime m. Then we can construct the uh, following uh, system of equations where each fi is equal to alpha times uh, d prime i. Now we can eliminate alpha from the equations and obtain the system of equations uh, where each equation is of the form minus fi times d1 prime plus f1 times uh, di prime equal to zero. We can see that it's enough to find the first coordinate d1 prime in order to obtain all the other ones. Essentially, the main observation here is that, is that each one of these equations will define a lattice of dimension two. Our main observation now is that finding the shortest vector uh, in a two-dimensional lattice is actually an easy problem. More pre precisely, consider the, the uh, lattice lambda j, which is the orthogonal q array lattice defined by the vector bj. bj is a vector whose first coordinate is minus fj over f1 and the second one is 1. Each lambda j corresponds to the lattice defined by the equations on the previous slide. We can now apply an SVP solver to lambda j and obtain the shortest vector gj. We now observe that d1 prime must be a multiple of the first coordinates of each of the uh, vectors gj. We can now set d1 prime to be the least common multiple of these values. Now, given d prime, we can recover d via linear algebra, and given z and d, we can find the solution s prime to the equation. Finally, given s prime, we can extract the receiver's input x. This concludes the proof against a malicious receiver. To conclude, we'd like to mention two additional results that we obtain in this work. The first one is that we can extend the OLE uh, protocol into a batch OLE where the receiver can commit to a batch of inputs and that achieves better communication complexity. The second one is that we can extend the OLE uh, protocol to allow for malicious uh, senders using cut and choose techniques at the cost of an additional OT uh, protocol. That's all. Thanks.